2 for Armor Recognition editorial team at IDET 2017, the International Defense Exhibition in Berno, Czech Republic. One of the most important programs at the show is the replacement of the BMP-2, an old Soviet-made infantry fighting vehicle. Four companies present latest technology of combat armored vehicles, including General Dynamics with the Hascot, Rheinmetall with the Lynx KF-31, Puma, the new generation of armored infantry fighting vehicle is now in service with the German army, and the CV-90 from BA Systems. And we try to introduce, as you said, uh, the escort here for the potential replacement of the BMPs. So the escort will be one candidate uh, to replace it uh, by the others which are uh, presented here as well. Uh, in that point of view, we have here one platform uh, which can feed all of the variants maybe chosen by the by the Czech customer. So it's it's unique here that this chassis can be taken for any of the variants expected. Uh, it was the the Ascot is the name the Austrian Spanish Corporation of Development. This was done by the two companies Steyr and at that time uh, SPS. Finally, we are even let's say under one umbrella of GD European Land Systems. So the vehicle is fitted in uh, Austria under the name Ulan and in Spain under the name Pizarro, where we already have some upgrade programs running as well. And recently the UK Army decided to procure this vehicle as well under 42 ton class with up to 600 vehicles. In this configuration, as we see it here, it's not uh, one which fits up to 42 tons, uh, but a, a lower number of tons. So this we can realize also with rubber tracks, which is supportive uh, because uh, the vibrations are limited compared to a, uh, to a steel track. Uh, and this is here some feature we want to present because it's not usual up to now for vehicles in this weight class. Uh, and we have integrated here, uh, as you said, first time uh, a knife wheel with the Raphael Mark II uh, Samson, uh, integrated, let's say, the 30 millimeter turret with the Corax machine gun and uh, spike launcher, which is actually out here to be seen. Requirement is to present here an IV, so meaning uh, gunner and commander. Uh, rather in manned or unmanned uh, version and then of course infantry squads and the, uh, the equipment to be taken with them. It's the first time uh, that we present our vehicle in Eastern Europe. Uh, the reason is they have a current uh, program from the Czech Republic and uh, next week the uh, tests are starting and uh, competition tests between uh, four competitors and we are a member of the test and we want uh, to show our, our product. Uh, it's completely new developed. We have a complete decoupled running gear. It's uh, complete new in, in tank technology and also the protection. It's the best protected vehicle of its class and from the German point of view, the point of view of the uh, German soldiers is the best protected vehicle uh, of the world. This turret is completely remote controlled with a uh, 30 millimeter machine gun and also with the ability to use spike missiles. It's uh, two uh, independent sites, fully a hunter killer capability with uh, terminal imaging uh, sites for uh, the commander and the gunner, also a laser rangefinder and uh, integrated self protection system, a soft kill system. It's an infantry fighting vehicle, not a battlefield taxi. And the German approach is to bring the soldiers through the line of fire and engage the enemies during that, not only to survive uh, for, the, for, the, for the crew, also to survive of the tank and be uh, more mobile and uh, able to, to fight against the 300 meters. So we have a crew of uh, three soldiers, a driver, gunner and commander, and a mounted or dismounted a squad of six soldiers. We have a 360 degree protection against uh, RPG. We have a soft kill system uh, against uh, um, infrared guided missiles, anti-tank missiles. 
and uh, also we are mine protected against the, the biggest common anti-tank mines up to 10 kg TNT. The Lynx KF31, as we presented here on the show and as we did in Eurosettery 2016, is the most modern family of vehicles um, that could be really interesting for the uh, BMP2 replacement of the Czech Republic, as it is modular, flexible, and most likely the highest protected and the highest capable vehicle currently available. We are really looking forward to this uh, demonstration and we think that's a very thorough approach of the Czech uh, Republic to choose the right vehicle for their demand because that is much more than just uh, written on paper. So our advantage, I don't know what our advantage is against the others. They have good products too. I like the, uh, the BAE solution, I like the GDLS solution and of course I like the Puma also which is a great vehicle uh, that's already in service with the Bundeswehr. The Lynx, I, lo I, I love the Lynx because we did this, we invented this vehicle on our own, uh, on our own money and we invented it for all armies in the world and like the Czech army if they have a demand for a family of vehicles based on a, on a common platform, on a common chassis and then to be uh, modularly com uh, customized to the specific demands of their army and to be very quick reactive to changing requirement and to changing threats. The main feature there is that you can select whatever weapon you like. If you like a man turret, you can have a man turret like the Lance turret with a 30 millimeter gun here. If you want to have a bigger caliber, you can go for 35 millimeter or even higher. If you want to have a remote control turret, it's no problem. We can add our own remote control turrets. We can add third-party supplier remote control turrets. At the end of the day, with the KF-41, so the high, uh, the, let's say the extended version of our vehicle, you are even capable to use a 120 millimeter gun turret. So you have a kind of an intermediate battle tank on the common platform. When it comes to survivability, you can start on with the basic armor against normal threats, and you can add up as much uh, uh, protection you need. You can put on a uh, mine plate, you can put on uh, ballistic armor, and at the end of the day, you can put on active defense system also to be protected against RPGs and ATGM threats. This version is the infantry fighting vehicle. Yes, absolutely. So we have a standard crew of the vehicle, like one driver, two operators, gunner and commander. And then we have a, a dismount crew of six or eight, depending on customer requirements. Behind me you see uh, two CV-90 vehicles right now, uh, a CV-90 with a manned turret uh, fitted with a 30 millimeter weapon. Uh, this uh, vehicle represents the uh, fifth generation of CV-90, which is currently under production and delivery for the Norwegian Army. There's been some minor upgrades compared to what we've delivered for some other customers. So if you look to the right to the turret, you can see there is an integration of spike missiles. Uh, on top of the vehicle, we replaced uh, the remote weapon station, which was delivered for the Norwegian program with a panoramic sight. Uh, and on the left side of the turret, you can see that there is a, a machine gun, uh, an ATK Mark 52 in a pod. Uh, and basically what we've done is we moved the machine gun out of the turret and put it on the outside to free up some space for the, uh, for the commander. So he get a better working uh, station. In addition to that on top, you also see uh, an active protection system. Uh, and I'll leave it at that for now. CV-90 is a modern product. Uh, again, as I said uh, previously, this is the fifth generation. It was developed uh, uh, by requirements from the Norwegian customer at 2012. So it's a 2012 model delivered uh, now. Uh, the other uh, unique feature with CV90 is that it is combat proven and with seven European users. Uh, and the third unique feature, uh, I'd say, is that uh, we have a proven industrial setup. We've exported the CV90 to seven users. Uh, and six export programs. Uh, and we have a, a very sort of proven and, and uh, sophisticated industrial setup, which we've also used together with our uh, 
uh, partners here in the Czech Republic. If we look at the vehicle, uh, in front of the vehicle, to the left you see the big uh, Utah site, and that's the uh, gunner's position, uh, right in the turret but left from us. Uh, to the right is the commander's position. In front of us in the chassis you see the driver. Uh, and in the rear section you'll find a squad compartment that fits uh, eight uh, troops. So we're now standing in front of the unmanned version of CV-90. This is the first time we've displayed the CV-90 with an unmanned turret. Uh, what you see is an unmanned turret from Kongsberg, the MCT-30. The rationale for that is that the uh, requirements for the BMP-2 replacement program is not yet set. Uh, it's early in the process, but uh, in the early phases there's been discussions uh, and an interest expressed of having an unmanned turret as well as an manned turret. And uh, to, uh, to meet that demand, we're uh, demonstrating both capabilities to give the customer uh, basically a choice uh, of what they prefer.